Hi friends, it's Lisa Hetrick, illustrator for Gina K Designs, and I'm so grateful you could join me today. Today I am sharing part two of the Whimsical Luna in Watercolor. Now in part one, and I've got that linked up below and also a card linked up with this video for part one, if you've missed that, but the whole part one and part two is inspired by this painting that I did last summer with the golds and the greens and I wanted to replicate that look and feel into the new beginnings stamp set that I just released with Gina K Designs. So here are all of the supplies that I have used in both tutorials. Now all of the links are listed below in the description but I'm just showing the list um, showing you the supplies that I'm using. It's quite a bit here but remember this list of supplies is for two cards two tutorials. So everything is listed below and as I move through the tutorial I will share what the pieces are as well. But again this tutorial is focused on two different watercolor techniques. This is part two and we're focusing on watercolor techniques using watercolor pencils. We're also using the New Beginnings stamp set and focusing again on creating that gold look and feel with embossing powders. So I've got a lot of different Gina K Designs products here and again all of the supplies will be listed below in the description and you can pull whatever supplies you have in your stash to do this tutorial. You don't need to use these supplies. You can use whatever you have in your stash uh, to create and have some fun with this watercolor tutorial. Okay, so let's move on to Luna Magic card two. Now, I have pre-embossed the Luna moth in the champagne embossing powder on a piece of Canson watercolor cardstock. Here is the sample design that I created and shared when the New Beginning stamp set launched. Now I wanted to do this tutorial with a little bit of a twist. This tutorial focuses on creating a pattern background with the Luna Moth and also creating some soft and subtle watercolor effects with a touch of the gold from the embossing powder. And I'm gonna talk about how the embossing is going to uh, help create some interesting effects for this project. So let's start with building the pattern. And I've got a piece of Gina K Designs layering white cardstock here, cut with the master layouts die. So it's going to be part of my card base and I'm going to use some Blue Lagoon cardstock um, as my card front. This is my card front and that will be my card base. So we're going to create this pattern with the Luna moth. Now, if you happen to catch my four part series on creating patterns with your stamped images, I'll have them linked up below as well. But this is straight out of that tutorial where we're, um, I'm talking about using your stamps to be the star of the show for creating patterns for your backgrounds. So I'm starting from the bottom here and I'm just going to go ahead and this is going to be embossed. We're going to emboss all of this in gold. So I'm using my Gina K embossing ink and I stamped down that Luna Moth from the bottom left and I'm creating like a flight pattern for this Luna Moth. So she's coming up from that bottom and then she's turning and coming in from the right hand side and then she's going to like do a complete 180 turn and come back down in to the card to create a little bit more visual interest. The lines in the Luna Moth um, are going to create some really interesting textures and contrast for our card base. So now we're going to go ahead and emboss all three of these Lunas to create our pattern. And I have the champagne embossing powder from Gina K Designs here. And you can see I'm just tossing it on here and I'm using a piece of paper to catch all of the embossing powder. So I'm trying to make sure that I've got 
the embossing powder all over the card and making sure it gets in that embossing ink really nicely. So I can go ahead and use my heat tool to go ahead and emboss all three of the Lunas here. And I went ahead and embossed and look at the shine. And I even have two of the uh, Lunas kind of um, overlapping each other. And I just love the way that looks. So this is looking really good. And yeah, we're ready to set this aside as our card base and move on to the watercolor techniques. Okay, so now we're going to focus on watercoloring with pencils. I'm using a green and a yellow watercolor pencil. You can use whatever colors you have in your stash. I'm just playing with greens and yellows. And we're going to use these pencils and you can see I'm doing a technique called direct to paper. So I'm taking the pencil like you would a colored pencil or just a regular lead pencil and I'm coloring in a little bit of color. I'm applying that pigment into the channels of the embossed areas. So this is helping me control where I'm putting the pigment. And again, this is called the direct to paper technique. I have a video up on my channel that I go through three separate techniques for using watercolor pencils. And I'll link that up in the description so you can take a peek at that. Now, what makes this a really easy going watercolor technique is that the embossing creates a little bit of a channel, and I've said that a couple times, for us to apply color. So you can see that I'm just applying some color and I'm kind of haphazardly laying it in here, but doing it the same way I did in part one of this tutorial, where I'm focusing on getting a lot of pigment within the center portion of this Luna, and then I'm going to um, use some water and break that pigment down. But right now I'm just adding the yellow accents in. So I'm coming back from the other direction and applying the yellow to the watercolor cardstock here, the watercolor paper. And again, I'm using the channels here and adding some of that yellow. So when I take and break down this pigment, it's going to mix the yellows and the greens together to give me that look and feel that I'm trying to achieve. Now, watercolor pencils are great to work with. And using the direct to paper technique, you can get a lot of great watercolor effects. These pencils, the pigments are so nice. My brush is clean. It doesn't have any, it just used some water. And I'm just going over what I have colored in and just pulling those two colors together. This creates a really easy going watercolor project for you, a watercolor technique that you have a lot of control over. So you're moving the pigment from the watercolor pencils around the watercolor paper. Now I have found that watercolor pencils work really well or best on paper like this. Now this is the Canson watercolor paper. Normally I use 100% cotton watercolor paper because I'm messy and I'm doing a lot of flowy, flowy techniques. But for my paper crafting and card projects, when I want to do things with watercolor that are a little more controlled, I don't mind and I do enjoy using this Canson watercolor paper or a hot press paper. But look at the subtlety of the greens and the yellows. They're very, very, um, they're a lot more muted. We can, of course, add more pigment, but we want to make sure I dry it in between. So I'm just kind of air drying it and also just drying it a little bit with my heat tool. And then I'm going back in and I'm adding a little bit more pigment. Now, one of the things I wanted to mention is that I am super heavy handed whenever I'm using pencils or markers. So it, I have to be very conscious of coming in with this color a little bit light, lightly. And so you'll see me holding the pencil out kind of far out to the edge. And that helps me get that lighter touch control. 
if I come into the watercolor paper a little too hard, it's going to scratch the paper and it's going to make it more difficult for me to get that pigment to flow. So you can see I'm also taking the wet brush and just lifting the pigment right from the tip of the watercolor pencil. And that's what makes working with watercolor pencils kind of super fun. You kind of get a twofer. You get a little bit of, you can color it in with direct paper, or you can use it right from the tip. And I actually talk about that in that video that I mentioned earlier that's linked up below. Okay, so I'm loving the way that looks. I went ahead and die cut this beautiful Luna out. You can see that she's so soft and subtle and just getting ready to assemble her right onto that card. So I took the embossed pattern card front and just put a little bit of glue on the back and just assembled her right onto that Blue Lagoon A2 sized card. I'm going to add a little bit of glue to the back of her and just apply her right to the card front and just kind of let her be the star of the show there. I love the subtle look of this watercolor technique. It's very, um, very translucent and it's not super, super intense. So I'm adding a little, last little bit of embellishments and, and a little bit of a touch here with some sequins. Again, I'm using the Emerald City sequins from Gina K Designs because they have some green and gold in them that are just so full of joy. Now, let's take a look at the final card. I am loving this card. I love the pattern background. We used one stamp from the set, made it the star of the show, and shampoo. Look at this card. So here is the card over on the right where I used black embossing powder and I used silver embossing powder and got a completely different look in watercolor. This gold and then those yellows and those greens are just so full of joy. Don't forget that you can download the free card idea sheet that I have for the New Beginnings stamp set. The link is in the description and I'm super excited to share these for all of my stamp sets. They just give you some great ideas to get started once your stamp sets arrive. So I hope you really, really enjoy it. So let's take a quick look at both of the cards in this little Luna series that I created two different watercolor techniques, same stamps, loving the way this looks, super easy going watercolor techniques that you can do with any of the stamps in your stash. I hope you really enjoyed these tutorials as much as I have sharing them with you. Thanks so much for watching. Please consider sharing the joy by liking this video and subscribing to this channel. And I'm sharing more card and watercolor tutorial videos for your inspiration right here. So come on in and take a peek at my tutorials. I have a lot to share and I'll see you next time.